All right, so this video is the exam review for our upcoming test on fluids. Uh, that's the only topic uh, that'll be on this test. I figured it would be best to concentrate just on fluids and then we'll get to optics for our final test uh, of the semester. So as it pertains to fluids, what topics do we have to worry about? Well, the first, I would say, is the fluid depth relationship. And this is uh, the set of problems that dealt with uh, how much pressure uh, is felt by an object as it uh, goes underneath or, or inside of a fluid to a certain depth. And the equation, pressure, is equal to rho, the density, of the fluid that you place the object in, times g, that's the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8, times h, which is the depth, how far down into the fluid is the object. And so the further down you go, the more pressure you're going to feel. And of course, along with this comes the fact that there's two types of pressures, uh, two ways of answering this question. There's uh, atmospheric pressure, or let me say it like this. There's absolute pressure. So the true pressure, total pressure on an object. And then there's gauge pressure, which is how much pressure is felt above the normal atmospheric pressure everybody feels. And of course the relationship goes like the absolute pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure plus gauge pressure. All right, everything feels atmospheric pressure. And then if you continue to increase the pressure, that is you go down into the water or something like that, you're increasing the gauge pressure and so the total pressure is just whatever was already there due to the atmosphere plus the increase due to the change you've made. So that's the first big one, the fluid depth relationship. Then we had Bernoulli. And uh, these questions were of the type you have some pipe system through which a fluid flows and the pipes can uh, constrict, get smaller, they can expand, get bigger. Uh, the pipe system can go up into the air a certain height or go down lower than it started, things like this. And what you want to do is basically find out how does the pressure change from one part of the pipe system to another. And a big equation is P1 plus rho g h1 plus one half rho v1 squared is constant. So it equals oops, p2 plus rho g h2 plus one half rho v2 squared. And so you can see there's three terms on each side. There's how much pressure is in the water at this point of the pipe. The rho GH term, that tells you, that's basically the depth relationship. If the pipe system goes further down, uh, then you're changing the height of the pipe system. So you're changing how much pressure is in the water because of how far down or how far up you go. And then the one half rho V1 or V2 squared term is how much pressure is felt in the fluid because the fluid is moving with a certain velocity. If you change how fast the fluid moves, you change how much pressure is felt. And that is a relationship of the size of the pipe. If you constrict a pipe, you increase the fluid velocity. The fluid must flow faster. If the pipe gets bigger, the fluid's going to slow down and go slower. 
And in fact, there's a second equation that deals with this, which is called continuity equation. And it's the relationship between the velocity and the size of the pipe. And it goes A1, V1 is A2, V2. A, of course, is the cross-sectional area, how big the pipe is, pi r squared, where r is the radius of the pipe. And V is the velocity. So if you have two sections of pipe, you say the area of this part of the pipe times how fast the fluid's flowing there is equal to the area of another part of the pipe to how fast the fluid flows there. If the fluid, as I said, constricts, it gets smaller, then the velocity in the second part is going to be faster or bigger than the velocity in the pipe before it constricted. And then the last uh, real big topic with fluids is Archimedes' principle. And with this, we had things like um, the volume of uh, the fluid displaced. So you put an object into a fluid. A certain amount of fluid will uh, move, will leave. Let's say uh, you're in a bathtub. You put something in the bathtub. The water level will rise by a certain amount. How much? Well, the volume that changes, how much the water level changes, is equal to the volume of the object you stuck in there. And that makes sense. The fluid had to move out of the way to make room for the object. Also, uh, when you put an object into a fluid, it could sink or it could float. And the reason is because there's a buoyant force acting on this object. That the buoyant force is that force which is trying to make the object float. It's an upwards, net upwards force trying to lift the object up out of the fluid. And the relationship goes that the buoyant force acting on an object is the same as the weight of the fluid that was displaced by the object. Okay. And combining these, we get a different relationship that says that the buoyant force acting on an object is given by the density of the fluid that you stick the object into, the volume of the object, so how big of an object you stuck into the fluid, times g. And one last relationship, I'll put it over here to the side, which is that uh, the percent submerged, so say you have a, a problem that says uh, you've built a ship, you put the ship into the water, and you find that one-fourth of the ship remains above the water. The question is, uh, what's the density of the ship? Well, this relationship says that the amount that's submerged is given by the ratio, the fraction, of the density of the object to the density of the fluid. So, if you have a ship, one-fourth is above the water, that means three-fourths is into the water, below the water. So the percent submerged is 75% or three-fourths. So that means the density of the ship must be three-fourths of the density of the fluid that you stuck the ship into. Very, very nice relationship. Makes problems kind of easy. Let me make sure this is seen as something separate over here. And so these are all the topics. So... The test will be comprised of questions from these three main topics. And just like our previous test, uh, it'll be all calculation based. The problems will look just like the homework problems have looked or the practice problems that are posted. Uh, you've already had a test from me, so you know what it looks like. You have an idea of how I ask questions. And so the same will be true for this test. 
uh, best way to study, obviously, is go back to the homework questions that were assigned and redo those. Do those on your blank sheet of paper. See if you can get through them without having to look anything up. If you can, you're perfect. If not, look at the practice questions. I've posted solutions to all of the practice questions on Canvas. So try to do the practice questions. If you get stuck, look at the solutions, see where you're getting stuck to try to help you out. Finally, uh, other than that, look in the textbook for their examples or go on YouTube or something and search out uh, example problems on Bernoulli's equation or example problems on the fluid depth relationship, things like this. There's plenty of resources out there to get good uh, examples to see how these kinds of problems are worked. Of course, you could rewatch my lecture videos or my example videos um, so you could hear at least my way of thinking my way through a problem. But that's really what this test will be like. Uh, I would assume somewhere, as usual, six, seven questions split between these topics in some way. But the questions will look, or at least be asked, in a way similar to how the questions have been asked already on the homework and such. So, let me go ahead and just do a couple of example problems, just so you can see them. Um, and you know what to expect. So, example one. Say, the question says, calculate the gauge pressure on a uh, wooden cube placed in uh, salt water at a depth of 20 meters. Assume the density of wood is 3,000 kilograms per cubic meter and the density of salt water is 1050 kilograms per cubic meter. Okay, so this is a question we'd like to ask, or answer, I should say. Well, uh, this is a fluid depth relationship. I'm told an object is placed into a fluid at a certain depth, and I want to know something about the pressure. In fact, I want the gauge pressure. Well, that's good, because gauge pressure means I don't need to worry about the atmospheric. So... I know that the pressure at a depth is equal to the rho times g times h. However, what rho is important? If I want to know the pressure on an object that's sitting in a fluid at a certain depth, I'm given two different densities in this problem, the density of the object and the density of the fluid. So all you have to do is figure out which of those densities matters here. And the intuitive thing is to think, well, what is the thing which is creating this pressure? Pressure is created on the object. Now, is that pressure coming from the object or is it coming from the fluid that the object is in? Obviously, it's coming from the fluid. The fluid is the thing creating the pressure. So then the density should be the density of the fluid, not the density of the object. So, 1050 times 9.8 times how far down my object goes. In this case, I'm told it's 20 meters. And so I just stick this into my calculator. 1050 times 9.8 times 20 gives me 
2.05800 pascals, or if I want to write this in scientific notation, 2.06 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Notice, I'm not adding in atmospheric pressure here because I'm not asked for the absolute pressure. If I wanted absolute pressure, I would take this number, which is gauge, and I'd add in atmospheric pressure. However, I just want the gauge pressure, so this is all I do. So that's fluid depth relationship. Let's try an example of Bernoulli. So, say I have a problem, um, a fluid flowing with a velocity of 10 meters per second through a pipe whose diameter is one meter, comes upon a constriction to a radius of uh, 0.5 meters. Then the pipe travels 10 meters upwards to the second floor. Calculate the pressure difference between the beginning and end. Alright, so if I were to draw this, I'd have something like this. Here's my pipe, it constricts to some new size, and then it goes up to the second floor. And I want to know if this is P2 and this is P1, what's the difference between those two pressures? All right, well, I know that the uh, equation is Bernoulli here, so I'm going to say P1 plus rho GH1 plus one half rho V1 squared is P2 plus rho GH2 plus one half rho V2 squared. Now, before I stick my numbers in, let me go ahead and manipulate this to get to the equation uh, I need, which is the difference in pressures. I'm going to call that P2 minus P1. So I'm going to move P1 over to the right, and all the stuff on the right, I'm going to move to the left. P2 minus P1 equals rho GH1 minus rho GH2 plus one half rho v1 squared minus one half rho v2 squared. All right, so now I got the equation set. All I need is to plug in all my numbers. Unfortunately, I don't know all the numbers yet. For instance, I don't know v2. I don't know the velocity in the second part of my pipe. So I need to calculate this. So before I use this equation, I first have to use continuity, which says A1, V1 is A2, V2. So what is the area of the pipe at the beginning? Well, I'm told the pipe has a diameter of one meter. Of course, I don't want diameter, I want radius. So I divide this number by two. So the one meter becomes half a meter. So I have pi 
times 0.5 squared, that's pi r squared, times the velocity of the fluid in this part, which is 10 meters per second. Okay. Then, what am I told about the second part? This has a radius of 0.5. Aha! Notice something. This is a tricky question. Based on the wording of the question, one would see the wording says that the pipe constricted. So that says it went from one size to another. However, if we actually look at the numbers, the original radius is 0.5, the new radius is 0.5. So really it didn't. This is purely tricky wording to not give things away. But that's okay. Don't You don't worry about tricks. If you follow the math, the math tells you everything you need to know. So if we solve this for V2, what do we get? We get V2 is 10. The pi's cancel. 0.5 squareds cancel. So V2 must be 10. And of course, it makes sense. If the radius didn't really change, then the velocity didn't really change. Now, had the numbers been different, the velocity would have changed, and you'd have some new velocity for V2. Okay. In this case, we didn't realize just by reading the question, by looking at the numbers, that the velocity didn't change. We didn't know that, so we just plugged things in, and we got a number. Here's the number. The number is, it's the same exact um, velocity as before, but who cares? That's what we got. Now that I know the velocity in part two, I can now use this equation. P2 minus P1 equals. All right, rho GH1. So what's the density of the fluid? I'm not told the fluid here, so I'm just going to assume the fluid is water. So the density of water is 1,000 times 9.8 for G times H1. What's H1? That's the depth or the height of the pipe at the first part. Well, I don't know what that number is. All I know is that I went from the ground or from whatever the original is to the top, which is 10 meters difference. So what I'll do is I'll say, okay, let the bottom be called zero height and the top be called 10 height. That's exactly the same as saying, well, let the bottom be called 10 and the top be called 20. As long as the difference is 10 meters, it doesn't matter what you call each. So I'm going to call the bottom zero and the top is 10. So H1 is zero. Oops, not green. Zero minus rho times 9.8 times 10. Okay, now for the second part, the velocity parts, we have 1 half, 1,000 times 10 squared minus 1 half times 1,000 times 10 squared. V1 was 10, we just calculated V2. V2 is 10, so this cancels this. So we have... 1,000 times 9.8 times 0, that's just 0. So all that's left is minus 1,000 times 9.8 times 10. Which is not negative 9, 8, 0, 0, 0 pascals. Now, you could either leave the negative or just call it positive. It doesn't matter. If you were to give this number... Because some people may do P1 minus P2. Others might do P2 minus P1. So one of them is positive, one of them is negative. It doesn't matter. I'll accept either answer. The important thing is the number. So this is an example of Bernoulli. In fact, it's an example of Bernoulli in a tricky trick trick question. The trick was... 
The question made it seem like the pipe changes radius. But in actuality, it doesn't. But that's okay. Even if you don't catch the trick, it doesn't matter. If you follow the steps and you do the math, the math tells you exactly what you need to know. In this case, the fact that we got 10 for V2, well, that just tells me, oh, the radius really didn't change. That's okay. Just stick the numbers in the way they're supposed to be, and you'll get the right answer regardless. But this is how you go through a Bernoulli problem. There's <clears throat> the height can change or the radius can change. The radius changing means the velocity is changing. Continuity allows you to figure out the velocity. Once you know that velocity, go back to Bernoulli, plug all your numbers in, and calculate whatever the thing is you're trying to calculate. So I hope these e examples have helped. Um, of course, obviously there's more problems online uh, on Canvas for you to look at and work. But I wanted you to see basically the style of question as well as how to go about answering them. So, of course, if you have any questions, you're always free to email me. In the meantime, do your best to practice as many problems as you can before the test. Uh, if you're getting them right, if you don't have to look at the solutions just by doing the problems, you're going to be great for this test. So I wish you luck. Until next time.